Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Homestead. If you've never been to the channel before, well, this is my end of summer garden tour. It's the end of August, beginning of September, uh, talking about my veggie garden, of course, and a little fruit thrown in from my fruit orchard. It's been a super hot summer. Even today, at the beginning of September, it is 112 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's projected to be that hot or hotter for the next week. Why do I live here, you say? Well, I have always loved the heat in the past. In the last few years, though, my tolerance for it has definitely gone way down. And uh, yeah, it has been a struggle for me this last six weeks. And so I've had to find ways to deal, which I have. I uh, referred to some of those that have been helping me through this summer in my last video about how to thrive, not just survive in the heat. But in reality, one of the things, the top thing that you can do is move. <laughs> and I have mentioned before, I am planning to move in the next year or two. And uh, I have found a spot I wanna move to, a town, a mountain valley town. And in the next video I do, I'll put up some footage that I took um, last week when I took a road trip to that town. I'm really excited about it. But meanwhile, you know, we have to live in the reality of where we are today. And that's what I've been doing. And so my garden has been producing like crazy. It doesn't seem to mind the heat nearly as much as I do. Imagine that. And so in this video, you're gonna see a lot of veggies and a lot of really big veggies. In fact, let me give you a preview right now. I have a lot of Armenian cucumbers. This one's as long as my arm almost from elbow to hand. And uh, when I say a lot, I mean like I harvested about a dozen of these today and I've been harvesting like that for weeks. But look at this. <laughs> for comparison, yeah, it's like twice as big. And yes, it's an Armenian cucumber. I don't know what it's going to taste like, but it should be interesting. <laughs> You know, I have debated when I'm going to uh, give up my summer veggie garden, clear it out and start my fall garden, maybe with a little break a week or so. <laughs> we do have the ability here in this 9B garden zone with such late, late winters. They don't really start till mid to late December. Even then they're mild. Um, we have the ability here to start and grow quite a late fall garden. And some things, of course, can grow right on through the whole year. So I've been debating, you know, when would be a good point to give up? Because in reality, I could keep the summer garden going right, right up through mid-November. The heat is definitely here to accomplish that. But I don't want to do that. I'm really tired of the summer garden at this point, and I'm somewhat excited about a fall garden and fall crops, um, maybe because it gives me this hope, however fictional it might be, that uh, rain and fall weather will come with that garden. I'm not sure. But next week, I have a chance to do that because I'm going to be out of town for two days anyway. Yes, one of my older daughters is getting married to her longtime girlfriend, and we are so excited about it. And so, we'll be taking this little trip, and it just kind of seems maybe appropriate, the perfect time to let some stuff go. Yes, I'm going to water before I go, um, but my question for myself is, am I going to insist that one of my older kids who will be back before I will does some watering for me and I think maybe not. I think that you know my perennials and my flowers and uh, they will be fine with a real heavy watering skipping a day I think unless you know it's 120. <laughs> but my other veggies you know it might be time to just let them go. It's a decision we all have to make at some point. I haven't made it yet but I guess we'll find out in a week or two. Let's get on with the tour and take a look at what hot summer heat here in Northern California can produce. And uh, it's quite a variety, at least for us, the things we like to eat. So let's get going and take this tour. Well, the watermelon patch did its job and I have dozens of Moon and Stars watermelon, so good. And we've eaten a few. I need to get the rest off over the next week or two. <laughs> but now the squash are kind of taking over. I've got some large winter squash going on here. 
got some uh, Hubbard's and some Amish paste. Isn't that interesting? I don't know if you can see the color there. The sunlight is so bright, but it's yellow turning orange with green kind of tinges here and there. What else have we got here? That is one of those uh, big watermelon. Yeah, they're just all over. There's another squash starting in there. And squash and melons. More melon and squash. And here we have some melon growing. And I think there's some new pepper plants coming up in here. Yes. Here's one here. And there's a few more. Here's one <laughs> growing amidst the melon and the uh, pineapple sage. And uh, yes, the okra there. I admit there are way too many okra on there. Some past their prime. The problem is no one here eats it. These were volunteers and they grow so easily, okra plants do. And I just love the look of the plant. It's gorgeous. I mean, aside from the beautiful flowers it produces. Right here is one about to open. It's going to be a beautiful yellow related to the hibiscus. So you can imagine if you haven't seen the actual okra plant before, how beautiful the flowers are. Oh, look, I did find at least one melon already growing in there. It's a green nutmeg melon and this probably means there's more in this jungle, so I'll need to investigate a little more thoroughly. <laughs> Once I started looking, I'm finding quite a few in this big patch. Can you see the one I just spotted? It's right in there. Yes, it's definitely like a treasure hunt here. Well, these Fresno peppers are producing. They're way back in the far corner, so I tend to overlook them and oh I've got some yellow pear tomatoes there didn't even know those were there that's a volunteer plant I'll have to come back in this corner more often and the back wall behind the very tall broom corn sorghum that is growing amidst the squashes and the uh, watermelon yeah very tall which they're starting to change color at the top now. Can't wait to see the colors they produce. They're supposed to be fall colors. But yeah, on the wall back there are the climbing Christmas lima beans. Let's go look at those. The trellises finally did fill up with the climbing Christmas lima beans. So I am really looking forward to growing a bunch of them and drying them and using them throughout the winter. Gotten pretty tall. We'll see how they do here throughout the uh, end of summer and in through fall. We stay hot right up through Thanksgiving through the end of November. So they should do fine. And there's the slope going upwards towards the west on the north side of my chicken coop. I have the main garden and I've been growing a ton of what? Armenian cucumbers, uh, yellow crookneck squash, zucchini, of course. And what else? Oh, lots and lots of cherry tomatoes mostly sun golds but a few um sweet 100 plants all producing a ton and a variety of other things including some personal sized melons that i love growing that would be the green nutmeg melon and the emerald gem melon look at that gorgeous kajari melon Nope, nope, that's not a melon. That is a butternut squash growing there. I do have my squash mixed in with some of my melon. I see a way too large yellow crookneck in there. Yeah, and a good size one. And this is the main melon bed. I probably have four or five plants in other places, but this is the one I planted actually at uh, the mid, mid part of June, I think. You'd think that might be too late, but it's not here for sure. I have lots of melon growing in here and we love this size and the flavors of both the Emerald Gym and the Green Nutmeg. They are hidden in here. You have to really look for them because their shades of green blend in so well. 
with the leaves. Don't know if you can see. Can you see the two there? No, three. There's one there. That one's easier to spot. But there's two right in there. Yeah, it's, oh, there's another one. That one in there is done. It's covered in dirt, but it's done. Yeah, this one is ready. It's smaller, and that's why it's done. And I'm not going to pull it off the vine because kind of like cucumber, you can actually damage the vine. They're connected pretty strongly. Ooh, there's a big one right there. I mean, you know, big for these personal melon size. That's the size of a, oh, a medium to large size cantaloupe there. So taste-wise, they taste better than regular cantaloupe you would get in the store. We just love these. And again, being the size they are, they're good. If you're super hungry and want to make a whole meal of it, they're good for just you. Otherwise, you can split them in half and share with someone else. And you don't end up with a bunch of leftovers, you know, getting their juice all over your fridge. <laughs> the red Roselle hibiscus is growing super well next to the melon bed here and, and the corn and cherry tomatoes. No blooms yet though, but I did start this rather late. Still, it looks super healthy. And that would be my Armenian cucumber growing up this trellis. I have put a chair right there between the corn and tomatoes and the Armenian cucumbers because it's in the shade. <laughs> because of the trellis of cucumbers, shade is there so I can sit there you know, if I need to sit down in the middle of my watering session or something. I think there's a lot of cucumbers on here. Let's check it out. Oh, I see one over there. And there we have a Burgess Buttercup. On this trellis, we have a monster, monster, monster. Look how sweet and innocent they start off. But then, that is huge. I'm telling you, it's like probably close to two feet long. <laughs> I need to harvest. It's so funny how the squashes and cucumbers grow seemingly overnight so fast and you just, if you're not right on top of them, you just lose track. I see more yellow crookneck. Although those don't look very crooked neck, do they? They look kind of odd, but they'll taste good. And look at that Armenian cucumber. <laughs> I mean, it won't be so easy to chop up, but isn't it hilarious? I love it. So pretty. And there are some pretty butternut growing. I love butternut squash. I didn't discover butternuts and their very similar counterparts, the delicatas, until, I don't know, about three or four years ago. And, uh, I mean, I'd heard of butternuts, I'd seen them, but I don't think I'd ever eaten them, which was, wow, what a loss for me. <laughs> butternuts and delicatas are so rich and buttery, so delicious. Just love them so much. And there's a baby bee butternut. So they're called butter bush squash, but they're basically baby butternuts. And I have a few growing. Oh, look, there's a little tiny one under there. me some bees in there and oh look there's another baby butternut oh no oh no 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 look oh guys so two two huge zucchinis definitely need to make some zucchini bread tonight or just shred it and put it in the freezer more likely now this bed has my lemon squash, which grows like zucchini. You can see it just grows one long vine. And uh, I have harvested so many lemon squash already off of these two plants here. I see now that the plants, oh, there's some more in there. I see now that the squash plants I planted later are producing. Got a delicata growing in there and, oh, I see a, I think this is a kabocha. All right, here. Oh, 
another delicata. I have a massive delicata. I'm assuming that's what it is, but it might be a hybrid because it grew from volunteer seeds that I threw out. I've just never seen a delicata so huge. Let me show you. All right, so I have some purple tree kale growing in this pot. And next to it, I've rigged up a little flimsy trellis that I never did secure, but I did it because some volunteers came up in this bed here that I really hadn't started using for anything yet. And look at the size of this thing. Not sure if you can tell, but it is massive. And I think, I think it's a delicata. But look down here, I've got this one. Uh, now this I feel like has to be some kind of hybrid because I have no idea what that is. It kind of looks like a gigantic yellow zucchini, but I've never grown yellow zucchini. I don't know. And also growing out of the same vine, guys, is that. I don't even know. That kind of looks like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything I've grown before. So these three squash are growing out of two plants. And you know what? It doesn't matter because hybrid squash tastes fantastic. <laughs> the only thing I had in here was a peppermint plant that's in bloom right now. Peppermint or spearmint, I'd have to smell it to be sure. <laughs> and here is another one, which you can see very faint stripes on, so I know that it wants to be a delicata, <laughs> but maybe it's gonna turn into more like uh, the one over there rather than uh, that one there. We'll have to see. But I've got ladybugs on the attack for the aphids and bees everywhere around here. And this little bed right behind my kitchen window, I don't pay nearly enough attention to it. <laughs> Cut chives, garlic chives here go into flower. I have some lantana and some beautiful purple fountain grass, green onions, walking green onions on the other side and some random flowers and Mexican heather. It's just a pretty little backyard view and it gives me easy access to the chives and walking onions. All right, I'm gonna harvest the rest of these apples off of this apple tree. I have been harvesting off of it for oh, two or three weeks now, but there's a good 25, 30 apples still on the tree and they're ready to come off, I know, because the squirrels are starting to steal them. And these are delicious apples. If you don't have apple trees, I encourage you to get some. Semi-dwarf ones are easy to keep low and you can harvest uh, without having to climb a ladder and enjoy the benefits and deliciousness of fresh fruit. Another apple tree that's loaded. Again, I've been harvesting off of it for several weeks, but still more apples to get. So this is the first time that this pear tree has fruited so well for me, but you can see the pears are kind of small and that is partially because I didn't prune them enough. Um, I think it might also partially be because of the variety of pear, but uh, I'm not positive. I'll have to do a little research on that. In any case, I just tried a couple and they are ripe and delicious. So I'm going to harvest them today too. Nothing quite like fresh apples that I can take inside and make applesauce or apple pie or apple bread. Ooh, that last one sounds good to me. I think that's what we're going to be doing today. At this point, the very end of August, the garden is starting to look uh, overgrown. <laughs> quite full, let's put it that way. And something's, yeah, definitely overgrown. Take a look at my lemon verbena, which remember at the beginning of this summer, it was about four feet high and about three feet wide. Well, if I stood it up now, it's probably seven feet high. It has grown so much. It's actually invaded uh, 
the chicken run over there. And it's blocked my walkway here. I mean, I need to stand it up. I need to prune it back. It's in bloom right now. It is attracting a lot of pollinators to the garden and it smells divine. And you know, I just have been going around it. It's not been a big issue. Well, it is a big issue, but it hasn't bothered me too much. So, so far I've just let it go. And this is one of my wonderful basil plants. Probably the biggest basil plant I personally have ever grown because of the uh, really, really hot, dry weather we have. Basil plants usually peter out by mid-July at the latest. Yet here it is at the end of August. It's because of where it's at, first of all. Gets filtered sun all afternoon. And um, I've been super careful to prune back the flowers repeatedly, you know, basically every day, so that it has branched out kind of bushy. And boy, does it smell good. And of course, it's great to cook with. And yeah, the purple flowering oregano, absolutely wonderful to use in an herbed vinegar. Give it a try, super easy. Two cups of vinegar, any kind, white, uh, rice vinegar, red wine vinegar. Uh, and uh, of course, if it's a lighter color, you get the benefit that I love the most, <laughs> probably even more than the flavor, which is that the gorgeous purple blossoms turn the vinegar purplish. <laughs> yeah, it's real pretty. So yeah, you just leave it in for a few weeks, then strain out the herbs and you've got herb vinegar. Wonderful on salads or mixed into a hummus, other dip. Yeah, give it a try. And I have some very nice rhubarb that has come back from uh, struggling with the heat. The sun, the lighting must have changed slightly as we've gotten to the end of August. So it's getting not only shade in the morning, but it's getting some shade in the afternoon too. So it is actually bounced back and giving me some good rhubarb again. I know it'll be better in the ground, but you know, since I've started contemplating moving, I have started planting perennial plants in containers so that I might take them with me when I go. We'll see how that goes because of course if I'm here a couple years they probably can't last that long but I can take them out divide them put some in the ground and put some back in containers because I do love rhubarb and it is so hard to grow here in this hot hot climate hoping to enjoy some more rhubarb and strawberry rhubarb pie pretty soon so the squirrels have pretty much left all of this squash alone but just to remind me that they're here. Oh look, this is some Chinese long red noodle beans trying to come back even though I cut down all the plants. <laughs> anyway, the squirrels, just to remind me, they are still here and they will still munch on my plants, especially the squash leaves. Look, they came over here. This is easy pickings for them being right next to the chicken run and they just, you know, munched on it. There you go. Uh-huh. But everything beyond that they've left alone and um, if you remember a few videos back I got some wire hardware cloth it's going to put it up on my chicken fence because that will keep them out and uh, yeah said I was going to do it did not do it but anyway they are apparently finding their food other places pretty much now because they're mostly leaving the garden alone at this point, thankfully. And yeah, we're trying to grow squash here. Now, that's really probably not going to work because you know what kind of squash that is? That's an Amish paste squash. And they get huge. So I'm going to have to stake that up with a tea stake or something pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, because there's another one. It likes it here. Look at the size of that vine. It's down here on the ground too. Uh, bees going at it in there. There's a little squash. And do, 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 do. here we go down on the ground. And look at that little squash waiting to be pollinated. I think we're going to have some really good winter squash coming out of this bed which is nice considering the struggle it had with the 
<sighs> Chinese red noodle beans. I'm happy to see that something is liking this. Still have pretty zinnias, snapdragons, and buckwheat, and some really tall amaranth, and some lemongrass doing beautifully. I love to make tea from lemongrass. And there we have a ton of sun gold cherry tomatoes. Can never have enough of those. More beautiful red and orange zinnias. You probably can't tell in this bright, bright sunlight, even though it's only eight in the morning, it's so intense already. But that is a purple crepe myrtle there on the right, uh, next to some beautiful snapdragons. Oh, and you know, one zinnia here that, you know, I'm not a big fan of this color. It's sort of a yellowish, light tinge of green, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of blah to me. So I won't be growing that one again. These snapdragons, on the other hand, I haven't even pruned them in a week and they still look fantastic. And that kiwi vine is just shooting way up. It's a male. It's looking desperately for a female which it's just not gonna find this summer since the female died last winter. And I couldn't find another one this spring, but I will, I will not leave you a bachelor, okay? Next year I'll get you a female so you can have babies. This little area has my kiwi there, of course, but it also has my kumquat tree. And a few months ago I did a video where I harvested Oh, I don't even remember 100, 200. <laughs> it was a crazy amount of kumquats. And as you can see, there's already more kumquats on the tree as well as more blossoms. Lots of new growth coming out, so it's getting taller. And here we have some volunteer marigolds. I did not plant those. I pulled a, uh, another plant out of there. What was it? Uh, oh, it was chamomile. And when this plant first came up, I was like, oh, is that more chamomile? But nope, it is nice, pretty little marigolds. And right here we have a rescued blueberry, which was in a spot where it was getting totally sunburned. I moved it here and it has come back and seems to like it here in the shade of the kumquat tree. And down below the kumquat is a bunch of purple alyssum, which is coming right out of this little lady. The loquat tree that started off as a almost a bear stick <laughs> that I rescued this past year is doing great here, surrounded by uh, the lime tree. Oh, I need to get that lime off. It's starting to turn yellow. It's gonna be a lemon soon. <laughs> Um, yeah, the loquat is doing amazingly well. Hopefully next year we'll have some loquats. My fig tree that I grew from a little cutting has shot up this year. It's doing very well here where it gets filtered sun most of the day behind the cherry tomatoes and the canna lilies. Speaking of cherry tomatoes, I think I need to eat these right now. You know, breakfast. Now isn't that a pretty dahlia? That's a tequila sunrise. And hey, I'm gonna show you my bougainvillea. My bougainvillea that's only about three feet tall, it's in a little one gallon pot right now. I have not planted it in the ground yet because I've been trying to see what microclimate it would enjoy the most. And it definitely likes it here where it gets sun until about 2 p.m., 1 or 2 p.m. And then shade. Look at that, golden blossoms. I love this color. I chose it especially because when I moved here, it was one of the few, very few plants that was planted here, but I didn't know it um, for about three years. I didn't know it. And then one day, the third year, it came up, grew and bloomed. And I was like, what is this? And then I researched and found out and went out and bought myself a couple because I love it so much. So I ended up harvesting so many veggies today. So I harvested 10 zucchini just this big. <laughs> Definitely need to do some grating and making zucchini bread with those. And then I harvested three or four, I think it was four Burgess buttercup. And you already saw the monster Armenian cucumber I harvested. Plus there were a dozen um, regular size, you know, foot long ones. And then I harvested several watermelons from my watermelon patch. 
just like this one, or even bigger. Plus apples from the apple trees, some pomegranates, uh, what else? Some more pears. I showed you the tree that was loaded with all the smaller uh, red ones, but I also had another tree, a different variety, that had very large ones that had about 10 left on it. Uh, yeah, pears, pears, pears. I have a lot of those to put up, definitely. Maybe make some pear jam. And a whole bunch of melon. I think I harvested seven melons, which I um, actually did that yesterday. And so we ate those last night and this morning, and they were delicious. And yellow crooknecks, which I'm going to put in some fried rice, I think, tonight. So, yes, usually when I harvest, I do it on a pretty daily basis as I go, little by little. Um, I think things got away from me this past week because I was doing video tour clips every day. And so I sort of put off the actual harvesting until yesterday and today. <laughs> and that was fun, but now I do have a lot of work to do putting everything up. And I am really grateful for how well uh, the garden has done this summer. I'm also grateful that you decided to share your time with me and take this tour with me. I really do appreciate all of you who watch my videos and those of you who can take the time to comment on them. I know that's not always easy, but it's fun and I enjoy interacting with you and hearing about your gardens. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, now would be a good time to do so because there's going to be a lot of changes going on as I prepare to move and yet a lot of the same stuff too. And I'm going to leave you with a clip of my ducks having a good old time at the end of summer in their pool. See you next time, everyone. And remember, you can create the life you want. So why not start right now?